video. Hello. Hello and good afternoon. So welcome to the second session for the online learning tips and approaches um, as a part of uh, the BALS webinar series. Um, so first of all, um, I hope that you're doing well. As a champion, we know the anxiety that is caused by the extended quarantine. But of course, let's take this opportunity also to learn while we're at home, and then it's a very good opportunity na pinovide po sa atin that we can actually engage and share um, our uh, parang experiences. Siguro we may have time later, and then we also parang take this opportunity also to learn something new while we are in, in the quarantine and we are in the safety of our own home. So good afternoon po sa lahat, and then let's, uh, no, are you ready to begin? So if you're ready to begin, that's a, li a little bit of a thumbs up para po tayo pwede na mag-start to talk about our very relevant and very important topic for today. So if you're ready, let's begin. So do you, are you seeing my screen, Puba? Are you seeing my screen? So uh, our topic for today is about distance learning, online teaching uh, techniques and approaches. Um, particularly very timely today because, of course, uh, during the quarantine, we're really um, waiting for things on ano yung mangyayari sa atin or ano yung mga, as teachers, it's a challenge also for us kasi we, we, this is something unusual to us, uh, the situation and what, what has been happening right now. So as we begin, so let me just introduce myself a bit. Yeah, so... Um, our topic today, thank, we're thankful very much for the Vibal Group for also hosting this free work, uh, webinar for us teachers to uh, improve our skills. Now, during the course of the workshop, if hindi po, if your questions may not make it on time, please do put your question in the comment box in uh, YouTube and we'll try to respond to it. But if you cannot, um, parang if, if it doesn't, parang if you after this you still have thoughts, please message either Vibal or me through my uh a LinkedIn chat, LinkedIn uh, account, or through email. So my email is already there. Uh, again, thank you for our viewers in YouTube for viewing this particular um, video. You can also view the video later on. So thank you very much. So first of all, let's have a little bit of attendance check. So medyo, since I can't do the attendance just physically um, in your own home, pakicheck po kung uh, you are physically present. Your audio is okay. Um, your... Uh, your monitor, your video is fine, and you're, you're in a place that connectivity is stable. So there's no interruption sa ating uh, uh, webinar broadcast po ng ating session. So if all is all in well and good, then let's proceed. By the way, in, in an annual online class, it would be good to do a physical attendance check. If you have a class list, it helps that you also do a check of people individually, are they present, or if all the participants or students that are expected are already in an online class. So, so like any class, let's begin with a set of rules. So, man. so let me just run you through the rules of this particular webinar. First, like in any classroom, I have specific rules for listening. So the first rule, actively listen to the person speaking. So most of the, so because it's a webinar and I'm the main speaker and I don't have any other co-speaker, I hope that you will be able to find time to also listen actively. Why do I say actively? Um, you can also comment on, uh, put your comments or questions in the comment box if you have questions or comments so that uh, this may also be addressed either within the workshop, uh, the webinar or after that. Okay. So that's my listening rule. The second rule is interaction. So be kind, be open to new ideas, and participate. So by participating means, of course, commenting if you have questions. And if there are comments or responses that maybe hindi po kayo pumapabot o medyo kakaiba yung naisip ninyo, try to listen first. And let's try to be open to new ideas, not just of my me for of me as a speaker, your speaker, but also of the others who are also participating in this particular webinar. Next, 
preparation. So please do. Uh, if this is a class, I'd ask you to ready your notes, materials. But of course, at this time, your preparation is if you want to take notes, please get a pen and a paper. Or if you want to use your computer also to type uh, relevant uh, learnings or comments or questions, please do it. And also, if you have questions, you can ask it. Or you can ready your questions, write them down, then ask them later during our question and answer portion of this particular webinar. So we have already our listening, interaction, and preparation rules. Now let's go to our last rule on security and safety. So let's make sure that our webinar poses a safe space. So that means we will try to respect each other's comments and feedback. Let's respect all agreements. If, you've ever, if there are things that you do not agree on, uh, whether it's from me or from the other participants in the webinar, let's not make any judgment. Let's try to, try to understand. And if we have an opportunity, try to also give our feedback or opinions on these things. So, parang, yun lang po, linatag na natin. In any online um, course or study, important then that we, hindi lang siya, hindi lang po, it's not because wala na sa classroom ang isang learning experience Mawala na yung rules. So always make sure that in the beginning of every class, the same, as I'm beginning this webinar, reminder also to everyone to also, as teachers, also set your own rules in your web, in your online classes or in your online platforms. To me, I basically look for four things. Maybe you can also want to adapt it. I have to have a rule for listening, interaction, preparation, and security. In short, lips. So look, read my lips and read, look at the rules. So next. Readiness check. So are you seated in your chair? Are you in a comfortable position? Are you now uh, using your listening ears? Or are you and are you ready physically and emotionally for listening to something new or something you already know? Na you will just try to hear it over and emphasize what you already know. So readiness check. Ready? Sit, find a place comfortable with you. Good internet connection. And then have a good monitor. Nakasaksak ang computer so hindi mawala ng um, charge ang phone or computer. And then so that we may begin. If I show you these two pictures, of course, if I ask some of you in YouTube, maybe you'll react. And, yeah, and, it's, and those who are you are very familiar with, with the picture, it's a, what, coronavirus. Yeah? And then we all have this mantra right now of saying safe because of the quarantine. And of course, who knows, it's already been extended and we don't know if it's still going to be extended. But this particular scenario ngayon, parang mapag-isip tayo. Ibig sabihin pala nun, merong ng bagong sitwasyon. This is not what we have been used to. So, kumbaga, looking at these statements, a lot of people are even saying, this is the new normal. It's a question mark. For those who will hear this, this pandemic situation and quarantine, is it a new normal? Is that your reaction? Or you're more of na parang nasa stress, na parang new normal. Galit. Or may anxiety when you say it. Or you have already accepted the situation right now. The saying, new normal. Na parang, this is my situation and we have accepted it. Or is it a new normal? That you are still waiting for what will happen next after accepting. Or new normal. That you are now accepting the situation that we have. The current challenge for education. And now moving forward into what this challenge is. So what, whatever stage of this quote-unquote new normal, whatever punctuation mark applies to you, ito ba ay isang bagay na hanggang ngayon tinatanggap mo pa at hindi pa natatanggap? O ito ay isang bagay na nagkukos sa'yo ng anxiety at galit? O ito ay isang sitwasyon na tanggap mo na? O isang sitwasyon na hinihintay mo ang kasunod? Kung ano man ito, things are already here. What we can do now is not just wait, but also develop ourselves to become ready for what would happen next. Now, whether or not school will come resume, it's the same as before, like classroom and all. Or we, resume, we go now to um, preparing ourselves for a different modality, which is online learning. Then it's all up to us. But it's a very good initiative na we are now here. We're starting to learn and we're trying to realize, wait, what, what's important? What, parang personal, it's a matter of a personal development for us to get ready for this quote-unquote, whether it is the real situation of the new normal. Now, if this is a familiar scene with some, but maybe for some not yet, when we go through online platforms and we meet, meet ourselves, and it's a challenge because it's, it's a technology challenge and it's a skills challenge. Now, just to share, this is something I saw over, face, over Facebook. 
Now, if you see that, makita nyo, diba? It's, it's, a, it's an old teacher. He's, oh, he's not closing his doors to online learning because he has no choice. So he's in a classroom because he's familiar with the setup that there are chairs and he's in front of the class. He's still facilitating his online learning. Diba? So if you think about it, that's, that's what we are. Diba? Teachers are about self-development. Teachers are about change. And change is never easy. Our situation in Korea It's just na parang magbago, di ba? Di ba sinabi nga, the only permanent thing in this world is change. So everybody needs to step up at this point and find out what level of change can we make adjustments to on a personal and on a professional level. So kayo ba, is this teacher na parang, hey, I'm still used to being in front of the class, so maybe I can set up my house, na para siyang classroom, then I do my video or my online class and I'm in front? Or do you, are you doing an, you, are you thinking of seeing yourself as an online teacher in front of your bed or sofa, tapos you're typing and then you're interacting with your students. So whatever it is, remember that what the beauty of all of this online learning is, you are given a certain space where you can also be comfortable, secure, and also uh, given certain limitations, make adjustments as a teacher, as an educator, and maybe also as a student. And so, sino sa inyo kayo? Baka maybe you are also like this teacher. But maybe you are a little bit more techy and then doing your online learning by a phone, your laptop, and several other devices. But the thing is, as we said kanina on the new normal issue, thing, things have, are already here. So, it, we cannot, we, it, 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 uh, if we feel anxiety or stress over things that are happening, we have to realize that this is the situation that we have no control of. But what we have control of is how we, as teachers, can also develop ourselves so we can adjust to this situation, whether this continues uh, later, uh, further, or magbalik sa dati, at least we are ready. Okay? Because that is the one that we have control over. So, so in any learning platform or any learning uh, environment, especially for 21st century learning. We try to emphasize that in a, in a learning environment should have these things. Connectedness. Are you connected with each other? What's the kind of relationships that you have with the students? Intellectual quality. What is the level of mastery? What is the level of the skills and competence that we are able to deliver or transfer to our students? Supportive learning environment. Are the support systems there? Are the discipline, the controls? Are the motivation, the encouragement that we have for the students to learn, whether it because it is required or in their own, is it there? Or is it the engagement or learning not just because of what they're supposed to learn, but they want to learn more than it? Or in expand ba yung natututunan ng mga estudyante na hindi lang dun sa kanilang nababasa? At hindi lang siya yung mga what, uh, who, where questions, but it, what they learn encourages them to move forward and to engage and to use what they learn um, in, to make a bigger difference, not just with themselves, but with the community that they in. Now, the question is, ito yung hinahanap sa, pag nandun tayo sa classroom, pero pag nag-online learning ba or distance learning, kailangan pa to? And I think the answer is clear to everyone why we're here. And the answer is, of course, yes. As we go about, let's just a little bit of a clarification. Sometimes kasi when we say distance learning or online learning, it's not one and the same. No? Disclaimer, ha? hindi siya pareho. It is all do different things. It may be related, but it's not necessarily the same. Distance learning encompasses a bigger picture, just to share. Kasi distance learning, this is a uh, the types according to Stern. Distance learning can be about telecourses that was delivered via TV or broadcast. Like if you know yung mga familiar kayo dun sa mga pinapalabas sa mga channel na about uh, science or math, about certain uh, stations na merong mga on this time. Like even I, I remember nung bata ko, we have Bati Batar Sesame Street na, or, or the other uh, more ano ngayon na mga other channels ngayon. That, those are actually telecourses. Now, in other countries kasi, meron silang scheduling na nakaschedule yung particular subject at a particular time, lalabas sa TV or radio. So, uh, of course, it's not like in the Philippines, pero that's an example of distance learning. There's also a kind of distance learning um, using mail or correspondence. When those participants in distance learning pinapamail sa kanila o pinapadala yung, yung mga materials nila, yung modules, and they learn on their own. Another kind of distance learning is given through, ayan, medyo, ano, I don't know, CD-ROM and ganyan. So it doesn't necessarily need to be always online. 
Uh, and then online learning is just one type of um, distance learning. And of course, mo you, now we, we take it a notch further, which is also related to online learning, mobile learning, using now, now your um, uh, devices like your phones. So, so again, to clarify, yan, it's not ni kami snowmer na pag distance learning, kailangan lagi online. Uh, online learning is a specific type of distance learning that that uh, we have to understand. And there are differences in like the level of engagement, the interactions that we have. Now, now let's go down to the meat of our particular uh, webinar today. Okay, question ko, do you see yourself as an effective online teacher? So, emphasis on the C, and I'll explain in a bit. So, kayo pa, nakikita nyo ba ang sarili nyo bilang isang effective na online teacher? I mean, siguro, you, you may see yourself, uh, be, even before the pandemic situation, nakita nyo na yung sarili nyo as an effective teacher, pero face-to-face. -face. Or, nakita nyo na yung sarili nyo as um, parang may lacking kayo sa pagiging effective teacher in the classroom, but maybe leveling up to online learning, you can actually improve yourself more. So, alin doon? Anong sa senaryo mo bilang guru ngayon? At kung mag-online learning man or mag-shift ng platform, maaring sa school nyo or uh, maaring permanent o temporary setup, nakikita nyo ba ang sarili nyo? But big emphasis on the C. And the reason for this is because I want to answer this question using also letter Cs, particularly the following Cs. So, so when we answer this question, let's try to figure out, are you seeing yourself? as an effective online teacher. So as we develop ourselves and do our checklist on what do we need to do to be effective, these are the Cs that I, we will go into, like computer, content curriculum, con context, communication, collaboration, coaching, control, and classroom management, and creativity. Now let's try to see, ano, what are the things? So, parang, ano pa dito yung mga kailangan ko pang uh, improve? Or what are the things that I can still develop as I as I uh, level up to become an effective online teacher. Let's start with the first C, which is about computer. So of course, you know, naman, it's, maybe let's expand this a bit further. Computer and connectivity. So we know some of you na experience, ay naku, wala mahina, uh, mahina ang signal, di ba? Or um, ay, hindi ako maka I can't connect to the webinar. I can't, eh? My YouTube is lagging ang tanggal because mahinap ng signal. So again, when you talk about online learning, the reason why it's an online learning because you have to be online. So check sometimes um, appropriate if you have web uh, mga live uh, videos, the bandwidth. I mean, you can ask somebody technical. But again, there's minsan you see the promos in the the internet connection or in the phone uh, data on a certain bandwidth, there's a specific minimum bandwidth for media, like streaming ng mga video or ano, usually 1.5 to 2. But we'll not dwell into that. Or minsan in your phone, if you're connecting via your phone hotspot, you will see 2G, 3G, 4G. So usually, when you want to do connect, you are aware that you have to have at least a 3G or a 4G connection on your phone to actually stream or be online. Be enough in the lang. And then, um, also, when you look for connection, especially on Wi-Fi, um, try to look for spots in the house or wherever you're going to facilitate your online learning. Dun sa, ano, of course, uh, kung naka, if it's an aligned internet, then better, para stable. But if it's on a Wi-Fi, uh, make sure that there are certain preparations needed. Like, hindi kayo, you're not near a TV because TV will interrupt signals. Or you're not near a microwave. Wow, pati, pati pala pag kitchen, no? it's a microwave. You cannot actually use ano, much because it also interferes with the signal and the Wi-Fi system. So again, ano, I know teachers are multitasking. I know some of you like can watch the TV while doing your online class or classwork. But yeah, for, for you, uh, if you want to be more stable in your internet connection and no interruptions with your class, then it is best to look for a spot in the house where you also avoid these uh, signal interferences. Next is, of course, of course, the mere fact that you are in this web, viewing this webinar, you are aware that there are different devices that you can actually use for online learning. So some of you, maybe you viewing this particular webinar via YouTube and using your laptops. Some of you may be using a desktop computer and a line internet. Some of you may be using your tablet or iPad or even your smartphone. So again, Pero ito yung consideration, at least for all, all of these concerns, for both connection and devices, it is not only a concern 
na you should think of as a teacher or an educator. You have to think also of your students. So when we launch online learning with as a teacher or in your school, also make sure that your students also have these things, that they have access to the internet, a, a stable connection, and then they also have access to devices. And then they are also have capability. Because, I mean, yeah, you, you are, if you put a big check on connectivity and device for you as a teacher, but again, we don't forget our students. Um, remember that we have to also check if they also we, oh, whether through directly through them or with their parents, if they have all of these things, so that at least for the technical side, solve you are solved in terms of the needed things or requirements for competency. Um, again, if you for you as a person as a teacher, naman, and maybe a, a tip for our students as well, when you are going to connect, or like for example, you have an online class, uh, some uh, your teacher or you're a teacher and you're going to uh, speak in your class or facilitate a discussion. You look for a place in your house. So, hanap po kayo ng place sa house na medyo, may, unang-una, may connectivity. Okay? Malakas yung signal. If you can sit beside the Wi-Fi or... But if it's a cable, it's usually stable. Tap, then, you also look for a space in the house because, again, like a teacher, you want to keep your focus. Um, and you don't want to be interrupted. So, you go to a place na may comfort. You go to a place that is secure. You go to a place that there is, you, you can in your own person, na yung pa yung baka, because I, I, to share, I had an experience before where I had uh, been talking to a webinar consultation and then the other person on the other level, which I was consulting with, nasa, he's outside the house and then may tricycle na dumaan, maingay, tsaka jeep. So imagine, um, yeah, he had connectivity. He was comfortable in his what, garden or outdoors. But of course, meron siyang distraction. So look for a place that there's no distraction. If you're in your home and it's your room and then you want to put a do not disturb sign, go and do so. Okay? Um, now, Nick, also for the computer, um, I know that we are trying out a lot of platforms, a lot of uh, 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 websites. Um, um, yung isang, the other thing that we have to take into consideration is, is the requirements of that particular, if for example, you do an assignment and then you say you use this platform or you use this uh, uh, particular software, make sure that, first of all, you have the system requirements and your students have that capability. Um, to share, I had an experience before when I was do, uh, studying data science and analytics. We were asked to use a particular software for data analytics. Unfortunately, for my com first, the first time I tried it with my computer, um, hindi, it's, there is no software for, for that specific computer that I'm using, for Mac. It's only for the other type. And then I tried another computer. Then the other pitfall I had was my computer was old and was not new and it was slow. So it cannot handle the processing of the software. So what did that, what that happen to me? Hindi, I could not even do the activity because my computer set I had was not capable to handle the software for the assignment that we have for the class. So eventually, I was able to solve that. But would you imagine if it had happened to another student na hindi niya magawa yung activity because, not because hindi niya alam or hindi siya nakinig, but because yung pinagagawa niya sa kanya is not, hindi kaya ng computer or yung device na ginagamit niya. So again, when we think of these things, um, think of it both ways. Think of it you as a teacher and think of it as a student. Now, we also try to go into the features. Now, look into the features because we, sometimes we, try, we like to uh, use platforms that are free or subscribe to things. May limitations. Like, for example, uh, you, you talk you, like we are using Zoom, right, for this particular bro broadcast and YouTube. Zoom. If you use Zoom and then exchange platform, we forget that, uh, wait, um, may Zoom pala ang class. Okay, let's have a class in Zoom. And then we say... Hi, Zoom has a subscription requirement. If you don't subscribe or upgrade, 40 minutes lang yung class. So if your class is only 40 minutes in discussion with no extension, then maybe that's good. But if you have to prolong a class or go on a certain longer periods of discussion, then try to consider also subscription membership. Now, I'm not saying it is a personal responsibility of teachers. Now, for the school leaders and administrators out there, if your two teachers also need a particular platform to deliver online learning, 
let's offer our support by also looking at the best platforms. If we need to really subscribe or to pay for them, then go, go, and go. I mean, not just for platform for webinars, but also for learning management systems and all of those things. Um, now let's go to the next C. So the first C is computer. Next, we go to the next C. So when we, uh, when we go for online learning, does that mean papalitan yung content or yung ating curriculum? Now, you know that curriculum is about what we're going to discuss. Now, the, the next question is, wait, I, I can't do it online. I can't do it face-to-face. -face. So can I still deliver my curriculum online? So of course, I know you, you probably could answer that question. But of course, it's not as if you copy-paste the curriculum or you copy-paste your strategy because again, the platform is already different. And then, looking at that, so we said, hey, how do I do the higher order thinking skills? How do I do the, the, this, uh, the higher order, the, the hierarchy of learning? Can I still go beyond questions of remembering, understanding? So sometimes when we do our assessments and our learning, it's not just in online, but it's also in face-to-face -face where we have to make sure that uh, the learning and the topics and the discussions that we do transcribe into something that is beyond just knowledge or the what's and the who's, uh, but also go beyond the why's and the how's to do it. So the same with, um, of course, processing content. Now, you know, because there's a danger when um, students also have online. One of the, the disadvantages of online learning is it's very hard to monitor um, let's say, for example, uh, yung mga intellectual dishonesty where students can easily copy-paste responses. In fact, you know, it's very hard to frame questions for online platforms. And I will be the one of the first to say, uh, not the first, but one of those who will tell that and, and put that into our mind. Na, for example, I have experiences here at home, an assignment, online assignment. In this, instead, of, ano, instead of looking and reading through the book, Ang gagawin na lang is mag type yung question, the question will be typed sa Google, as in the question itself. And then Google can also generate based on the question responses. So that means, as teachers, the challenge now is how to develop questions that are not just easily answerable by a search button in Google. So ibig sabihin, pag nagawa, if you draft your questions, is it, is it a question that if I click it, type that question in Google, the answer just pops out. Uh, so that means we ha also have to level up. Dapat tayo bilang guro, nagle-level up din ng ating um, way na paano natin ginagawa ang tanong kasi maaring ito ay napakadali lang na, na mas kuha yung sagot. And how do we assess our students in this? How do we ensure that they read the material and not just Google the answers to the questions? So yun, that, that's a bigger Parang topic in terms of the strategies and approaches in um, online learning. But again, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, call this, it doesn't say that hindi na natin, papabayan na lang natin na, ayun, challenge siya eh, di ba? When, when have we as teachers um, given up on, on trying to develop? So, of, of course, yun lang. And then, um, again, it's not just about framing the questions, but using realizing what a particular tools we can actually encourage our students to use or what particular exercises we can do so that we measure we are able to make sure na lahat nung uh, levels natin ng learning na, na de deliver natin kahit online yung ating approach i mean think of it this way um learning is still learning the thing is the mo the, the method the method that we're doing it and the platform that we're, we're using right now is just the, the one that has changed. But it does not change the fact that as teachers, as educators, we still have an obligation to make sure our students acquire the necessary skills, knowledge, and competencies, and even behaviors, even using an online platform. Hindi po nagbabago yun. Kapag ka po tayo ay guro, obligasyon pa rin po natin na masigurado na ang ating mga mag-aaral ay may tamang competency, skills, attitudes, and behaviors na, na dapat nating maitawid. Face-to-face uh, -face man ito o uh, gamit ang online. Now, uh, just a little bit of an emphasis kasi tingnan po natin, di ba? Sabi natin, regardless of um, the platform or the method, 
the content of what should be taught for the 21st century does not change. So what does that mean? It is still the core curriculum, the topics, the subjects, or whatever it is, integrated subjects or compartmentalized subjects, math, science, English, and whatnot, plus skills that they need for the 21st century, that they should all have this global awareness, literacy, in financial, and business, and entrepreneur, civic literacy and responsibility and environmental awareness. So, ako, parang, if you think about it, eh, ang hirap, how do I, paano ko ito maitawid? How does this happen? Considering that there is a pandemic situation, I don't see my students and all. Um, it's not, it's about also challenging ourselves at this point. Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi mo nakita ang mga mag-aral ay hindi mo na siya maituturo. Mayroong mga paraan na tayo bilang guro, kaya natin siyang maitawid o maituro sa ating mga mag-aaral kahit online. I mean, let's take this opportunity. I mean, nobody wants for the pandemic to happen. But maybe, let's try to look at it this way. What if we use the pandemic situation as a springboard for valuing in our lessons? For example, in math, diba? we can teach about what? Delivery of uh, the reply uh, whether it's a higher math problem ng algebra na how many households can be served by this number of budget. Or it can be in the lower level na if you have how many relief goods does this. And then later on, add on the processing in terms of the financial literacy na ano, could our government sustain all of this and in this forward? Kayo at the household. But then there should also be always reflection questions on how these lessons transcribe to real life, pandemic or not. These particular situations we can talk about, okay, what does this have an effect on tayo, yung vulnerability of the human race so that how we can take care of our environment and ourselves, global issues. So when we talk about our lessons later, as we prepare for the coming school year, it is good because the students are now coming from a certain experience of home quarantine, pandemic situation, maaring magamit as springboard. Because again, we maximize our experiences and the learnings from the things that are happening around us. Things do not change. Again, we said it's only the platform and in, in the learning environment, but the expectations remain the same. The skills are still there, expected. And of course, it's not just also those extending beyond that. We know that learning in the class, in, in school or whether it's informal or formal, hindi lang siya about yung mga topics or subjects. That learning should go beyond and talk about life and career skills. Because school is supposed to prepare them for the real world. Parang tayo, di ba? Mga, para tayong lahat na, na, na stuck sa ating mga bahay. Um, but again, whatever happens to us every day is a preparation for the real world. And the school's objective is to actually prepare our own students for life and career skills. So that means not not for the not just thinking present but looking forward. So they should have these all of these things. Like consider when we teach online, kahit online, dapat make semblances of leadership, responsibility, ethics, uh, skills, people skills, adaptability, direction. So when, then we social responsibility, productivity. So how can we do it? This is online. I mean, there are still platforms, direct or indirect, where we can actually ask them to exercise this. If we have team activities in online classes, then we can have the chance to them to exercise personal responsibility and leadership. If we are given a schedule to work on their own, then we, we emphasize self-direction. If we teach them to collaborate and communicate in online in a respectable manner, with proper respect for each other's languages and messages, then we teach them ethics. But again, these are the indirect. But we can also teach them directly by looking at well, the context of what is happening now and paano natin to may implement sa kanilang mga lessons sa ngayon. Paano mo may lalag? Kasi again, no topic is too sensitive for sometimes or it's just a matter of framing these questions, framing these lessons so that they can also be understood by our uh, own students and how do we actually integrate the values in whatever we teach and it stays the same whether or not it's face-to-face -face or in online yeah. so again another 
consideration when we talk about curriculum is that, of course, you should have a platform. Of course, you should have a list of references. If, if the books are not available with them, then what online resources are available for them to use? What particular, based on their devices, what are the things that they can have access to? Now, for not just for teachers, pero po, also for our school administrators, let's try to look at what particular learning management systems are available. Now, for example, um, you, you have the learning management systems. Sometimes even DepEd has their own. And then Vival can also has one, which I think uh, one of their, uh, no, we'll talk about later. And then you can also have, what are the mobile apps? What are the massive online courses or MOOC platforms? What are mobile reading applications? What are the collaboration platforms that support live video communication? Now, ano yung differences niya, no? So digital learning management systems are the ones that kind of record attendances. You can put, students can submit their requirements there. You can actually grade them there and then it will also reflect. So it's also a platform for learning. Para siyang channel. But again, this does not replace the actual teaching, ha? it is a tool that we use. The mobile apps that are existent pwedeng in support of the digital learning management systems, and it, it can be a ver version or it can be a separate thing. Massive online, open online courses are actually websites, usually websites that offer free courses. Um, sometimes you, if you want to get the certificate, often they ask you to pay, pero meron namang iba, you can get a certificate on this um, uh, for example, the webinar is kind of a semblance of a massive online course. Um, there are also some courses in um, the Sikan Academy, uh, which is overseas. And then these are free. But if you want to get the certificate, then you pay. But again, if your purpose is for self-development or to get resources for your students, then it is good that you explore also these particular sites. Uh, mobile reading applications, like let's say you can download a PDF or the mga word documents that you can read and you can send to your students and then collaboration platform what is a collaboration platform ito po yung ginagamit na ginagamit ngayon zoom go to team skype um and uh, what they call this go to to team ms teams so these are just examples of platforms where people can share or interact um online so, for example, for our, if there are public school teachers also in this particular webinar, you have your own uh, LMS from the government. But again, this is only for public school teachers. And then you also have a DepEd Learning Commons. So the DepEd Learning Commons po is like a mook naman, massive open online course. Uh, where siya na, there are some topics or resources that are there. Now, before it was open only to public schools, but right now, DepEd, because of the quarantine, has opened this particular resource also to our private school teachers. So you can download materials for me uh, that you can use. Uh, this is not an LMS, rather. This is a uh, sharing of resources. These are resource materials. Another source for links is also a DICT website, uh, Department of Information Community technology site on a link to different platforms where you can actually learn. So this is a, another way that ano, we can go. And then, of course, we have the Bibal v Smart as an LMS naman. Now, as an LMS, it now also links uh, your learning to encode your grades or attendance. And then, so, so kaya nga siya learning management. It manages the classroom administrative requirements. And later, we'll talk. Another one is a Google Classroom na free where you can put... Um, your, your materials or share resources. Of course, all of these things, it's up to you on what, what would be uh, best for you. But again, learning that content and curriculum has to be loaded into, uh, don't just choose a platform because it's convenient or it's free. Always take to consideration, one, yung learners po natin, what platform are they also going to use? And then you are, as a teacher, is going to have access to it. And to a certain extent, for younger learners, parents could they be able to access it and they would have um you know access to see their children's progress as well so syempre, there are many considerations um sometimes um if you want to engage on it on your own but also you can also encourage your schools for example to also invest or be support a particular uh site platform para then unify yung direction ng ating school and then it's easier for us uh, and then in, in terms of sharing and collaboration, mas madali siya. 
Okay, so now we go to the third C, which is context. So understanding the current situation right now of our what we have, of course, we are all uh, home-based and in quarantine. So taking that um, very into mind, we realize that, wait, can I use this particular platform to learn? Because this is the actual reason why we are also studying or trying to see if we can be an effective online teacher or can be an online teacher developing because, at least, as we said earlier, may quote-unquote new normal. So we're not sure if this would be eventually in a way that we can adapt to the situation. Because who knows? I mean, if the pandemic wanes down or gets healed, paano if it happens again? So are we again ready? So of course, it's a part of the teacher. One of the important things of being a teacher is always to be prepared. So that means with this particular situation, it's also an opportunity for us to hone our skills and to expand beyond our strategies or how we deliver in an online classroom and in a face-to-face -face classroom to an online platform. Now, you will see that everything should still be there. Again, um, I'm, as teachers, it is also our responsibility na mag -develop, to develop ourselves. So that means um, we expect our students to learn, but we also, as teachers, level up all the time and try to learn and develop ourselves, like what you are doing now in this webinar, so that we can develop ourselves for, um, for further situations. And we show that we are adaptable and we adjust to the situation. Of course, part of context is also understanding who our students are, are and what are their background, saan din ang competencies nila. And now, background, our students come from different, uh, come in different uh, shapes and sizes. They come from different experiences as well. Now, it doesn't change. Kasi kung face-to-face -face ang learning, we also take into consideration our students, the in uniqueness and the individuality of our students. And we do not forget that, whether it is in a face-to-face -face modality or in uh, online learning. It also gives us an opportunity to look at our students' different competencies. We are aware that even on a face-to-face, -face, even before, our students are different. Our students have different learning speeds. They learn things in different speeds. They learn things in different ways. It does not change. So even if you deliver via online, their students are still the same students. Some of them learn faster than the others. Some of them learn kind of a little bit, you need a little bit more support. So hindi lahat ng sujante natin pare-pareho. Uh, siguraduhin natin na nasusuportahan natin ang mga mag-aaral na medyo mas kailangan ng suporta at yung mga maunawaan din natin ng mga ibang mag-aaral natin or students natin ang medyo mas mabibilis maka-pick up. Iba din ang kanilang mga konteksto like maaring mag magaling ang isang bata pero minsan may oras lang siya sa pag-connect sa internet o meron siyang mga ginagawa bukod doon. So yun mga konsiderasyon ano, na, na kailangan natin ilagay dahil hindi nga pareho ang ating mga mag-aaral. Ganun din sa atin bilang mga guro. Kasi alam ko na hindi yung iba sa ating mga guro, syempre magulang din. Okay, magulang nga yung magulang as parent, hindi yung magulang na madaya. Pero pwede na ding pareho kung gusto ninyo. Magulang. So ibig sabihin tayo ay parents. And then we in the homes, maaring nang tayo nag-aaral din. So pag nag-online learning, syempre dagdag stress. It adds to our stress because we have students who are our children at home, that we have a responsibility to supervise. And then we have students who are there in the online platform. So as you think about it, when you give your assignments to your students, also think of the side of the parents and also think of the side of the students. Because baka mamaya, all of you, the teachers, are giving so many much work so that you can focus on teaching your kid or do to your other tasks. We are forgetting that they also have parents and they also are our students. So the volume of the assignments should also be commensurate. And considering that we know that we are not there physically to be with them during the entire time and that they have take homework, their parents have to also have that na mayroong support system. And we know not all of the parents eventually will have that particular time to send for them. Especially for some families, knowing our students na may families na mas malaki than the others, bigger families may, whose parents or siblings may not have time to teach. So, 
all that when we do our lessons, when we do our activities, all put that into mind. And then you don't just think of your content or curriculum, think of your students and even their parents. And also you as a teacher, do you have time to check all of these numerous assignments? Yeah. And understanding that in our school, there are different generations. You as a teacher, anong generation ba ako? At yung sudyante ko, anong generation ba siya? Now, a little disclaimer. It doesn't mean that you are born in a particular year. You belong. You may belong by cohort to a particular generation. But it does not mean to say that your attitudes are completely of that generation. The generational differences are defined because of the different milestones that have happened through the years that define how the students, what the students' culture, behavior, and perspectives and attitudes are. Because, for example, if we talk about this younger generation, this generation na exposed sa ating technology and computer. So when they were exposed, they have been born into it. They are not familiar of the old strategies. Whereas yung, the old, katayo, yung mga most uh, seasoned, the seasoned ones, have been into a generation that we didn't have technology much when we were in the class. We didn't have PowerPoint. So we learned by writing. We learned through our books. So as a teacher, also take that into consideration. You cannot expect our students to learn the same way we did, especially during this time. And we have to make most of what their experiences are in it. So understanding this, it doesn't mean if a younger student adapts a technology. Again, realize that different locations. Some of you may be in regions na mahirap ang internet connection. Some of you will be in areas or subdivisions with very good connection. Same, same with the students. Or meron sa inyo who could be, have been given an iPhone. I have students before who had phones at a young age. And I have students who had phones or access to Facebook even, already in high school, they were not allowed. In high school. So all of these things, uh, we have to put into consideration. And also the attitudes of each particular generation. We did a test before, I recall, I, I, in a couple of workshops that I did on different generations. We did a test and I said, it doesn't mean you're in a generation, your attitude and behavior is that of your generation. And surprisingly, we found out. We have Generation Y and X teachers who have baby boomer attitudes. And then we had Generation X, Y teachers who were actually Generation Millennials or, or Gen Z attitudes. So again, these, but these are things to just guide you in terms of what are the exposure of our students? What is their level of competency when it comes to technology? Because if you think about it, there are some technical skills before that you have to go through college to know. Like if you before, if you want a video edited, you go and pay for someone to edit it. Now it can be done in the comfort of your home. Before you had to hire a professional to do it. Now even your students can do it in their phones or in their computers. So those are the things that actually shift, um, not just learning, but uh, learning and teaching, but also assessment of uh, how do we conduct our assessment and what activities that we go for our students. Okay. So we understand that different generations have particular experiences, particular exposure, paduan nuances. Um, we try to understand na parang don't expect your students to react the same way, to have the page, the same patience, the same attitudes as you do, or the same values. Because again, these are shifted by our situation. Like, few years from now, we will reflect on those who have been affected by the pandemic and how has this affected their culture and their generation. Now, another thing when you talk about context, yan. Sino kaya? Kilala niyo ba yung mga nasa, ano na to, nasa slides na to? I mean, di ba? So, we talk about this generation's influencers. When we were, when, when at least my generation, when I was younger, and I mean some of the other teachers, when we talk about somebody, when you are asked that question, like, kunyari, parang, ano, parang um, beauty queen contest. It's like a, a parang Miss Universe. And you are asked a question, who is the, major, the person who influenced you the most? Often, or who is the person that you aspire to be? And often, we're using a beauty pageant contest. A lot of us will say, hey, my mom my teacher, I want to be like my teacher, I want to be like my mom, I want to be like this. So they are talking about probably persons of authority, per, like parents, teachers, uh, school officials, or even probably even sometimes uh, politicians or whatnot. But at this day and age, there's another factor that influences our young learners. 
Um, and I'm not just talking about young learners in uh, elementary and high school, even college, that they are also influenced by, so, or parang, they are also affected by certain influencers in media. Um, so you will see now their fascination with a lot of things. Fashion, music, yung mga fads, mo- certain kind of movies, fantasy. So now knowing these things, the, the challenge is, let's not make it as our competition. Okay? Probably if you want, you can make it your competition. But why not use it as a, as a help to us, as a springboard for us to be able to get their attention and to get their motivation? So why, why are they um, so into this influencer? Oh, they're so into fashion. So maybe you can look at ways how to put it in your lesson or how to put, oh, they're highly visual. So I have to make my um, visual, my online presentations or I have to make my videos very visual. Oh, this guy is a good dancer. So maybe I can, and the students like to dance, maybe my activity can be try to dance or come up with music or or anything that is related to that. So, pero may disclaimer. When we look at the influencers, can we also, and use them as springboards for our lessons and use them to motivate our students. It's a challenge to look at who are the ones that are kind are more in the positive side. Right? I, we know nobody's perfect. Lahat nagkakamali, lahat hindi naman perfecto, di ba? Pero pag naghanap tayo ng tao na maaari natin i, ano, gamitin motivation as the inf- na, na currently na influencer na bata, let's sway them to the ones who have a little bit more of a positive influence rather than the influencers who have a negative effect on them. I think as teachers, you know what I mean. Uh, we understand each other by realizing who would be good examples for our students. Na parang we don't shove these people aside, this this trend of listening to influencers, but looking at it and using it whenever we make discussions or to motivate them to find out what their interests are and in, put it into what uh, our lessons. Now we go to the next C, the fourth, communication. Now what is communication? Of course, everybody knows it's very important. Um, we are aware that uh, in communication, non-verbal communication is the one which is able to transcend or transfer our message more than our verbal language or what we say. Kumbaga, it is our gestures, it is our the tone of our voice, it is our mannerisms that convey our interest in our message. Now, challenge, kaya pa ba yun? Considering na puro online na lang yung, yung nangyayari na learning sa atin, na parang eh, hindi nila nakikita yung facial expression ko masyado. Hindi nila nakikita yung hand gestures ko. So, paano yon? So, ayun, let, let's try to figure it out. Kasi, again, it doesn't mean that you're online. You, you're no longer um, considering these things. You still have to be wary or you still have to consider the non-essentials. Now, it doesn't just say the oral language when you talk to the students. It also talks about how your, your, your messages in their group chats or GCs or in your learning management system, or in instructions in your page, or your group, how is what is the language that you use? And how do you write it? In the same way, how are your students saying it? Kasi yun nga, it's very hard to read messages right now, especially if you don't see the person saying it. Parang minsan, nakala mo galit, hindi pala, di ba? Uh, yung pala, sinasabi lang. Or minsan, niniisip mo, um, okay pala, pero hindi pa. So, when you dab, online platform na online class siguro where there's a video, then that can be seen. But there are also non-verbals that can be seen in online learning that we should be we should be very careful about. Especially in the communication that we have for our students. Like this one. I know a lot of you may have heard this in the past few years. Netiquette. Which is a combination of the word internet and etiquette. So that means we have to be also, it doesn't mean that we are in an online platform. We forget also our um, ethic of being our respect and our, for others. And we also forget uh, certain tenets of communication. So if you search over the internet, there are a lot of resources or a lot of rules that you will find. You can even make your own. So this is something I uh, got from the internet when I was searching. So this is for perhaps younger kids on trying to realize that of course, when you talk about online communication, since of course you're now shifting to an online platform, you always have to consider certain rules. Um, again, everybody has may sabihin, freedom of speech. Everybody can speak his or her mind. Okay, yes. But again, 
I always remind um, teachers and students, yes, uh, we have freedom of speech. You can say what you want. But we also, for teachers, a uh, disclaimer is you can say what you want. But we also don't forget that in a social platform, you do not erase your being a teacher. At the end of the day, you are still a teacher. And especially if your students have access or can see your comments or posts, then that means you also have a responsibility to maintain that professional level. So respect is still there. And we do not want our learning or classroom or exchanges in comments or whether it's Facebook or other platforms na maging cause of conflict between our students. So we make sure that we also make sure uh, our students understand the rules and also emphasize respect, how to talk to another person or how to respond, uh, what languages to use. I mean, for others, ito, this is another example that I saw being positive na say nice things. If you cannot say something nice, then don't say it at all, di ba? As a teacher and as a student, naku, marami tayong, uh, we, a lot of people who are like this. Yung click ng click, tapos share ng share. Uh, and ginagamit na excuse, free internet ako eh. I was not able to look at the site. Or ano lang ako, free, ano yun? Free, in, basta free internet, I didn't see it, or wala akong oras. But before we share, as a teacher, and we also tell our students, make sure we check what we share. Kasi that also determines um, parang, ano, parang, parang we, we, we always say we know to fake news. Paano, what, but what if you become also an agent of sharing fake news? So madali naman kung i-google or research yung information or the sites or the materials that we share with them. Also ask your students, especially if it's already an online class or online platform, to use correct language. Correct language, for example, um, I don't know. I think I should have mentioned this sa uh, sa content. Like how do you do subliminal messaging which is also with netiquette? If you're a teacher in English, diba? Why don't you make all the ko ay it's an English class or online class so all your comments should be in complete sentences. Or if you're a Filipino teacher, lahat ng inyong komento o yung mga argumento ay dapat nasa a kompletong pangusap. So by making sure that it is a combination of netiquette or ethics, but it's also a combination of writing their thoughts. Um, diba, there's a controversy right now. Diba? Senior high school student, according to the news, some of them graduate, hindi marunong magsulat. So this is already an opportunity to encourage them to interact. But you can also be creative. So creative in, 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 in how you deal with things. Now, again, ano, let's go back. You language, if you're not yet aware, or for those who already know about this, sometimes sabi, oh, huwag kang all caps mag-comment or don't write your message in all caps because if you write your message in all caps, that means you're angry. So, diba? So, again, that, that's another cultural, uh, rather cultural, that, that's uh, another practice in online communication. Ah, ganun pala yon. If you write in all caps, it's either you're emphasizing a point or you are mad. So again, those are non again going back to communication. That's non-verbals. So we have to be careful of that as well. And then a lot of there are a lot of people who have arguments. Nagaaway, nagaanfriend. Uh, they have arguments over uh, posts or comments. So in the same way, we avoid that from happening in our classrooms. So let's try to emphasize rules from our with our students not to make fun of other people. If they do not agree with the comment, they have to comment or react to it or reply to it and kind of still exercising respect. And if they do not agree on something at the end of the class, they still should at least be kind of friends or classmates. And then you, you just have to focus on what, what is the lesson there. I mean, yun nga, it, 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 even if it's on online. Minsan kasi a lot of people mas matapang kasi hindi kaharap yung tao eh. So, di ba? Mas matapang mag-comment. They are braver to write their comments. They are braver to criticize because they are behind their computer and they're not facing the person. And that's true. And then you have to accept it. But again, it is our responsibility as teachers and educators to make sure our students are aware of these rules. Because again, we are training them. For the real world, they are training them late for later. They are training their behavior. So if it, we can imbibe in them this discipline, pag na, nailagay natin itong disiplina sa kanila, then 
we have already made a contribution in making sure that these rules, these respect values in the internet is already there. So, we're talking about nonverbals in communication. As we said, there are a lot of people na nagkakaaway-away because of comments, because of posts. So, yun. First, let, let's try to maintain that. As teachers, let's maintain a clear and concise, use of a clear and concise language. Let's keep our statements short. The lesser said sometimes, the, the better. Kasi the more we say, the more there is, can be cause confusion. So, when we write instructions for online activities, keep it short. But short, simple, but the essence or the main instruction should be there. The tone of the language should also be medyo um, maingat. Kasi again, what we say can always be misinterpreted by others. So um, my tip sometimes, if I'm not sure of what I'm going to post or what I'm going to say, I ask my friend or my colleague or somebody in the house, can you read this? Uh, how do you read this? Tingin mo ba? Ano, ano ba? Tapos they can give their feedback or you can chat a friend or a fellow teacher. Oh, this is my instruction. Can you help me improve it? Because it gives you another lens into, another, and into what you're saying. And it also helps because it is now becoming a collaboration. Paano y- your work now becomes collaboration. Now you help each other in refining your uh, instructions and refining your tools because you help each other as teachers or kung hindi man sa teacher sa house. But, but that also gives us a self-check. So being online doesn't mean you don't have mechanisms to do self-check or get peer uh, help in checking your material. So still make sure you make the, sure to do that. Responses and receipts. So that means... You have to respond also to your students. In a personal level, pag binati ka na isang sudyante, good morning teacher. Di ba? Pag hindi ka nag-greet back, masama ang loob ng sudyante. Or if a student submits a requirement and then you don't acknowledge that you received it, di ba? Parang syempre, in a personal level, if, if somebody feels bad. So in the same way, in the online platform, make sure kung hindi ka man mag, ano yun, what you call that, you greet the student, then you greet them all back whether all or individually. And then if they submit something, acknowledge, I have oh, I have received your project. Now, if you use an LMS, siguro, like the be smart thing of Bibal, I think they log, it, it logs on the time that you submit. So nakita mo nga, receive the teacher. Pero kung kunyari, iba lang, kunyari, you do another platform or email, then it's best that you also acknowledge the students. And if they have comments or they have reactions or yeah, they are exercised to comment on this particular post or to comment on this particular lesson, then acknowledge the replies. Especially, uh, motivate them, tell them a good job, pag maganda yung sagot, pag hindi maganda yung sagot, then try to uh, discuss it with them because uh, being noticed also, the responses, whether right or wrong, also matters to our students. At the end of the day, it's very important that we exercise professionalism. Now, I know know that the social media is a safe, is a uh, private space, but we also put at the back of our heads that we are as teachers, we are professionals, and the language and the tone of our uh, lessons, our posts, and everything should matter because it reflects, parang kumbaga, that's our brand as a person and as a teacher. So when we communicate with our students, at saka when we tell our students, like for example, English teacher, you say, okay, do your comments and complete sentence. But your instructions and your replies to them, you say, G, which means, diba, uh, 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 um, BRB, right? Parang, if, if it is a formal setting, set the rules. As much as possible, use a little bit more formal language because you are in a classroom. Uh, lang, it's just online, but in a session, you can do it at outside, but perhaps if it's in a formal class, maintain the, a more formal language and a formal approach. Yeah, because again, then we now go, so that's clear, communication. So at the end of the day, consider nonverbals, consider our, the language that we, the tonality and all, and uh, maintain always professionalism in the, the, what we say, especially in, in the context of a classroom, online class. Now we go to the next C, the big C of collaboration. Now, when we talk about collaboration, this now is the technical thing of what happens in an online class. Now, in an online class, of course, pwede namang students submit individually. But remember, there's also a, some, an expectation of a certain life skill that they help solve their problems 
to collaboration and helping each other. Because in the real world, in the real sense, they will have to also collaborate with other people. So for example, ang tips lang, reminders, of course, uh, collaboration is a very tricky thing. Uh, there are tools that are used for collaboration, like for file sharing, diba? sometimes a student can share a document or, uh, for higher levels, like, okay, let's collaborate on this. So all of them are opening a particular file, let's say Google file, nag edit sila sabay-sabay, or they chat so that they can finish a requirement, which is very prevalent ngayon using Facebook. And then you have your video conferencing, like, like what is happening right now, pwedeng video counseling one way, like what I'm doing, or a video conferencing using the other platforms like Skype, Google Meet, um, Go to Meetings, Zoom, and all of those things. Na parang you can do a conferencing that we can get feedback also from our students. Also other knowledge-based tools and certain design elements that we need. Um, just a reminder when we collaborate. Okay, first is on file sharing. When we encourage file sharing, please. Still, if you can, teach your students or you yourself on putting certain security settings on files. This means that you have to also put um, parang provisions because, of course, it's very easy to for other people to access it. or the, So, parang it get, get teach them that they have to limit uh, access to particular shared documents and all uh, for privacy purposes also. And then don't keep everything uh, very public because remember, especially for those in the basic ed, um, we know our students are minors, so of course we have to be careful also of identity and all of other those things. Uh, on file sharing also, another nuance kasi is if our groups or for collaboration of our students on online am big, if they are big at malalaking groups, imagine in, the real, in a face-to-face -face mode, it's always chaos to have bigger groups because the bigger groups so most parang too many cooks spoil the broth. So too many of them are actually reacting on a particular topic, a particular ganyan. So sometimes it's good to keep teams small. Parang in the same with collaborative learning, teams should be kept to a certain size or small lang so that people can have equal sharing of their responsibility and they can all contribute uh, to the project. But again, Reminding on privacy issues, which is also related to privacy issues on online team meetings. So access, limit the access if you can, particularly the class. And then also study platform security. Um, unfortunately, one of the platforms that we used was Zoom. Also, already, Zoom and GoToMeetings have already issued publicly um, privacy issues. So if, those are, if privacy is a key issue, avoid using certain platforms for your class and use alternative platforms that are more secure. Like, say, well, I don't know, Skype, MS Teams, Google Meet. Okay, the next after, of course, when you collaborate, and you ask your students to collaborate, and again, collaboration is not just about students, but also teachers. Um, take to mind collaborate uh, also another word, coaching. Now, when we say coaching, dito yung coach na parang coach, basketball, volleyball, or anything. This is a life coach. Um, responsibility. As teachers, we have a responsibility to coach our students on, on coach. What, what is the difference of that in, in remediation or in coaching is life more of life skills, teaching them beyond. Because again, we do not forget about the relationships we have. Even if it's online, we still have to have a certain relationship and we still have to get to know our students. So when we do this, for example, we know you already have a class time. Nyari, whether ikaw yung mag-determine ito or the school determines it for you. Sabihin sa inyo, okay, 10 to 11, you have a class. Then you have a schedule for the day. Make sure that you also set aside for class an open time for consultation. Sabi, whether you want it by appointment or they can chat you anytime during this time. You say, okay, uh, I am free every Tuesday and Thursday if you want to consult with me on topics. Now, why am I saying this? Um, I know that everybody is so accessible right now with FB Messenger, text, and all. Pero, tandaan natin that we also have to maintain our, our, our work-life balance and have to set boundaries. So as we teach our students boundaries, we teach them that we also should have our boundaries. So they say, okay, beyond this, I'm going already to attend to my home duties, I'm going to study. Um, so you set a schedule. Because otherwise, if we do not set a time for them to consult, then they can just disturb you any time of the day. So of course, it's unhealthy already, stressful. 
So let's set the boundaries and tell our students to respect our boundaries as well. By showing them that we have boundaries in some way, we are teaching them to keep their own to their own boundaries. And then, of course, we talk about coaching time. When we talk about coaching time, consultation is more of like topic related. If they have a hard time with the topic or hindi nila masagutan, teacher can I ask if I didn't get this lesson beyond the classroom hours. But if we talk about coaching, to me, coaching time naman is trying to get to know your students. Like for life, um, one of the responsibilities of the teacher is also being the second parent, local parent. So how do we now coach our students in terms of life? How do we get to know them? Diba sabi nga natin, context, finding out what our students are, what they like and what they do not like. So this is an opportune time for us also to take some time also to get our students individually. So even if we do not see them face to face, we are also aware of what is going on in them and using that to understand them as well. Now, the next after we coach our students is finding out what are the controls in an online class, classroom management. Um, I just listed them. Now, there are so many elements or components of classroom management, but for the purpose of online learning, I decided to just flash these five things in particular. One is schedule. We already said that earlier by keeping a schedule on when you conduct your online class, when you do consultation, when do are they supposed to submit their work, like deadlines for the week, deadlines for the month, expectation for the quarter. So lay that down. Kumbaga, it's the same as face-to-face. Uh, -face. You have a schedule. You have particular time schedules. You have a particular schedule for lessons on uh, the content uh, for the quarter. So maintain that because that gives you a semblance of order and to keep track of what you are currently doing. Um, set your routines. Like, for example, one would be on the schedule. The other would be, okay, every time we start the class, make sure you have this requirement or our routines on submission of deadlines. Rules, um, like what I showed earlier, what we did earlier, though those who started this at the beginning, I flashed my own rules. So that means at the beginning, you make sure that rules are understood by the students and are followed. Parang classroom lang, uh, the same rules apply. Um, set your rules, um, set your rules, and then just make sure our students understand and follow them. And then reminders, uh, after the class, um, do we have submissions? By the way, when we you set your routines, please also respect them. Like sinabi mo, okay, every, um, usually you set a curfew. By 7 p.m., wala na akong send assignment. So you're clear. Pero by 7 p.m., may lumabas pa, then that's it. So, kasi I also hear about students complaining about teachers who set their assignments like 10 p.m., magpo-post the following day. So also set your boundaries with the students and set their rules also and make sure you follow them. And the last would be also relationship. So what we talk about our relationship with students. Ma classroom management always relies strongly on the face-to-face -face with how we deal with our students' concerns, how we recognize their individuality and acknowledge them. So in an online learning platform, it's the same. You have to value, you have to know your students pa rin. You still have to know your students and you have to know what is what how unique they are and how special they are and what are their problems. And then as a teacher, we cannot help all. But we, as much as possible by knowing them, it helps us do a better job at teaching and influencing them. So again, set the rules before each session, like what I showed in the beginning of this press, this webinar that I set my own rules for this particular webinar. You can do the same. You can draft your own rules that will be applicable to your class. Of course, consider the age of your students, their le level, the, the subject you're teaching and their um, ability to recognize. So sometimes it's good to also note it, the, the prime, when you look at misbehaviors that are happening in your class, uh, online class, um, there are just, this is just a commercial or related thing. Make, there are primary causes of misbehavior. So is it when the student is ranting out in public, is it because this person wants to get your attention? Or is it because you want to exercise so I have power over this class, I have influence? Or a person commented on him or her, na comment ng masama, gaganti siya. So we avoid those things. He, the classroom is, should be under your control. Or do we motivate our students enough to have confidence to talk in the class? Parang hindi, yung, hindi na siya nakakapagsalita. Or confidence to echo their concerns or their problems. Or confidence to assert themselves so that when somebody argues with them, nakakasagot sila. And okay, so yun yung ano natin. So consider that even if the classroom is already plat uh, online, 
man, class management should still be present. And of course, let's go for the last, almost last, creativity. So class should always, we know the students learn different ways. We know students learn through different materials. I mean, that's why ang hirap nakalaban ng computer kasi merong visual, may auditory, minsan nagtatype sa lamit. That's why it's very hard to compete. So you use that now as your advantage. Come up with so many activities, so many materials, resources for them, and vary the activities, the modality or the strategies. You have to vary kasi may tinatawag na redundancy. Although re re routines are good, there's also in learning redundancy principle which talks about if it's always the same parang consensual you end the lesson with wow so class what did we learn today that's how you synthesize then they already know what to expect but if you already vary also the activities or how you frame your questions then that it can be more motivating and they will listen because sometimes pag sobrang routine they won't listen anymore because they already know what's going to happen next. Okay? And then maximize the different materials over the internet. Videos, uh, audio, podcasts, uh, pictures, memes, whatever it is. Maximize it. And also try to be creative. Like, ito, I say in a quote, if you want to be creative, stay in part as a child with creativity and invention that characterizes children before they are formed by adult society. Keep that openness. Eh, don't go tayong sarado sa lahat ng opinion. Keep that spirit of curiosity alive and keep that artsy, creative spirit alive. Um, and then you create when you talk about creativeness, for example, as a teacher, you don't need to say, okay, class, do you understand? Also, sometimes you can vary na, oh, pag yes, uh, can you do this or can you answer like this or can that? Like, an example I think I gave was on math. Let's say, for example, if you agree with me, para hindi copy paste at gayahan ng sagot. Can you give me an, an equation, the solution is answer is three. If you say no, the answer that you do in the equation in the comment box should be two. Yeah. So parang you vary also, be creative also in how you assess or how you elicit the replies from our students. Okay. And then next is, of course, um, there are so many other ways to be creative. I mean, let's not limit ourselves just because our platform is online. In the age of... Um, information, ignorance is a choice. So as a teacher, it is our challenge to develop ourselves as teachers. Now, let's go back. Balikan natin yung question natin sa, sa umpisa. Are you seeing yourself as an effective online teacher? Nakikita mo ba ang sarili mo na isang effective online teacher? So, binalikan natin. Computer, con do you have the necessary uh, computer and connectivity? Do you have knowledge over content and curriculum? Do you have understanding of context? Do you have communication skills? Do you collaborate? Do you coach? Do you have control over the class and classroom management? And do you have the creativity skills? Let me just challenge you. There's a last C that I want to share. Now, because we are as teachers, educators, and we have a bigger responsibility, we have a last C, which is compassion. So at the end of the day, our students are our responsibility. Being second parents to them, even if they are remote, parang OFW parents lang tayo. They are not with us physically, but we have a responsibility to understand their situation, to realize what are their limitations and their problems, and to help them whenever we could and whenever we could. So yun po yung ating C. So as a teacher, put into mind, we are teachers for a reason and we should be teachers with a heart. So with that, that's the four C's that we have for teachers and I hope you learn them. Let's just realize that there are limitations with online learning that of course it is prone to, to parang copy-paste answers, we avoid students from googling the answers and getting the answers. So it's a challenge for us. But again, as teachers, it's also our responsibility to learn ourselves so that we can encourage our students to learn um, more. So at this point, I just got a few questions that we have from YouTube. So let's try to answer this as we conclude. So first of all, how do we motivate traditional teachers to adapt to change to digital teaching? Um, first and foremost, una una po hindi na siya ano eh hindi na siya optional at this day and age. We have to really first they have to realize the situation na parang um ayon nating maging eventually obsolete. I'm not saying naman obsolete in traditional. I'm just saying, um, ayaw natin dumating yung point na ganong strategy would be. We have, we have to encourage and tell the teachers na 
no person is too old or too young not to learn or not to lear- lear- to learn or not to learn anything. It is a matter of choice. Now, mahirap po kasi, remember, older persons would be a creature of habit. They already have practices, nakasanayan na, eh, ganito yun, ganito eh. So, ako lang, um, siguro from an administrator perspective naman, let's extend our patience with them and help them understand. Minsan naman kasi the resistance is not because ayaw nila. Minsan the resistance is also because nag, not, they also have a fear na hindi nila kayang gawin. Uh, if we as fellow teachers or administrators offer our support and assistance and we are patient with helping them to learn, then I think um, it's not easy, okay? It's never gonna be easy, pero we can help them. So it's a challenge for you as a fellow teacher and your fellow administrator. What support system can you give to the teacher so that they will learn? Because sometimes yung resistance is not just because ayaw nila eh. It's because minsan nahihirapan lang kasi sila. So kung matutulungan natin sila ma-overcome yung hirap, um, I'm not saying this is for all, but I think it, it can apply also na pwede natin silang gabayan. Parang estudyante lang. Let's treat like our, older, our more senior teachers as our students, di ba? We don't give up on them, but we try to help them or give them the necessary support, assistance, or scaffolding para ma- mag-guide sila. And then, next question from Mr. Alan Gibone. Can you suggest uh, to solve the issue of non-access? Hindi po yun nasa akong kamay. Ako po ay hindi goberno. But I do know that the DICT or Department of Information Communication Technology uh, through the recommendation of the Department of Education, I'm not from DepEd by the way, but I'm working also with them in some point, is also working on increasing connectivity to some areas. Pero po, meron po akong disclaimer ha. Paalala ko po sa umpisa pa lang sinabi natin na of course, we do not limit ourselves with what is there. Ang um, distance learning po, hindi lang siya online. Pero may iba pang paraan na maitatawid. Like sabi ko nga, TV, uh, radio, uh, pwedeng email or padala yung mga requirements sa mga bata. Pero meron pong paraan, I, I know that for some point, um, because I talked to the one of the officials of the ICT recently, he did mention that there's a plan up to 2022, may strategic plan on. Um, I'm not the authority, but they did mention that they had. And then I think uh, it is also DepEd's concern right now to look at what other ways other than online learning, uh, can, how, how can we deliver education, not just considering um, online learning. But of course, ano yan eh, again, um, online learning is not just a problem of government it's not a problem of teacher it's a problem of it's not a problem it's a challenge of everybody as a teacher you are challenged to develop yourself to have the skill the platform as a student you have to have a challenge to develop as a parent yeah you also have a challenge to help your student your children adjust as the government lgu barangay lahat po tayo problema po natin yun how about primary grade um yes i agree yun yung medyo pitfall ng online learning. But um, I have family member kids na natuto po sila basta sa first part, they can uh, be guided on how to use technology. These kids are very adept <laughs> in technology. So sometimes, if they just know how to do. Pero I, I agree that the parents or somebody adult or somebody who's more should supervise them. Um, sa kids masyado, you have to also choose the materials that are engaging. Um, siguro ma'am, I'll chat with you na lang some resources. Chat with me or yun sa email ko on the resources. I can share some of the possible resources you can explore for uh, the primary or early grades. Yun lang, dapat po may time din. Uh, routine sa bahay. That, that's another story, parenting for online learning on how you can, as a parent naman, how you, they should also have a specific time to follow up and to make sure that the kids also sit down and work on online learning. Kasi ang hirap po ng screen time is also a problem of online learning. And then last question is from Ms. Um, uh, that question, by the way, was from Ms. Gerdy Mil- Milones. And then from, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, clearly Anne Zano. Is the new normal thing for next school year? Do you think we and the public schools are ready for this? Thinking not all too fast. Yeah, I agree po. Uh, yeah, I'm working on a certain survey before on readiness of schools, public and private uh, teachers' reactions to this. Um, hindi natin kasi pumasagot sa ngayon kasi of course all of us are waiting for the final decision of Department of Education, the Department of Education on the school year, and I think they're all active. I know, I know they're actively working right now on solutions to uh, finding out. Kasi ang bawat lugar po, 
at ang bawat eskwelahan ay may iba ang ibang kondisyon. Um, hindi lang kung kondisyon, pati mag-aaral. Alam natin po yun. There are some LGUs or areas na mahina ang koneksyon, merong iba malakas. Merong iba, halos lahat ng sudyante may internet, sa iba hindi. So I think, um, yun nga eh, kaya nga we were talking about online learning bilang isa lamang na isang, isang paraan kung hindi siya yung La, hindi hindi lang siya yung alternatibo sa traditional it is just um um parang dito is it it is just a uh, it is is just an alternative o isa lamang it po ito sa ano sa isa sa mga um what you call this this is just one of the modalities or alternatives na tin, na maaring tingnan kung hindi man magkaroon ng face to face so mali din nating explore yung iba pang paraan i'm not sure uh, miss marjorie macul at uh, It, it will be an online teacher. Oh, yes, ma'am. Good luck. I, I'm praying for you po, for you and the teachers who want to explore. And dito po kami to support also. I'm a student from Carlos Garcia. Kahit po student, I'm learning. Thank you. Um, my school is a government school and most of the students have limited access. But our teacher told we can use yes. Uh, Makakapag-communicate po ba kami sa messenger kasama? Yeah, um... Very good. I mean, yun nga po, kahit free FB messenger, if you can communicate with your student, that's already one step towards um, reaching out to our students. Uh, ayun po. Yes, ma'am, I agree to your statement. Maraming paraan para makapagturo ang guro at makapag-aral. Tama, kahit wala internet. I believe there is at least one phone per household at sana magamit. Tama po yun. Lalo na ano pa ng telecom that they will be free data. Opo, ang... Comments po, ang depend comments, by the way po, uh, bus si too smart and Globe po yan. Anong sinabi, you can access it for free, pero yung site lang po na yun. If you go to other sites other than the depend comments, ibablock na kayo ng inyong Wi-Fi. Ay, ng inyong Globe or Data. Yun po yung, if you look at the depend comments po. Thank you din po sa mami sa nakikinig sa atin. And learn the lot. Thank you din po. Maraming salamat po. Hashtag, we heal as one. Hashtag, we learn as one. Philippines din po. So other, ano po? Si Vika Staino, medyo... Baka overtime na po tayo. Um, other final call for questions. But again, let's go back. Let's recap everything. All of these things we are trying to learn because we are teachers. And as teachers, it's not because we are the source of learning. Pero dapat po, we are also willing to learn and learn we learn things. And we should be willing to do the change. We tell our students to change. We tell our students to develop and to work hard. Then as teachers, the challenge is also for us to work hard, to challenge ourselves to level up. There are things that we have time control, internet and all of those things. But let's not make it as a limitation for our bilang guro. Um, gumamit tayo ng ibang paraan, maging creative po tayo sa paghahanap ng resources, mga platform, mga paraan, para po mas matuto po ang ating mga sudyante. At hindi lang po sila yung matututo, tayo din po. Kasi tayo ay nasa akad -ak. Uh, nasa field ng acad uh, academics or learning. So, dapat po lahat tayo ay natututo din po. At uh, may mga bagay din, wala tayong control. The only thing we can do is adjust and to learn. And at the end of the day, always have a heart. Kasi ang guru, guru po talaga, ang pinaka nagde-define sa atin sa Google, kesa sa mga platform o pag-search, is meron puso ang guru at nakikinig at umuunawa sa ating mga mag a So, yun po. So, any more questions? Do I need to turn it over po to our next, ano? Questions po? So, ano po, um, if you also have problems, by the way, uh, Vival also has a LMS, I think, platform, which is called Be Smart, which you can also use po and explore as one of your options po for uh, learning management system, which you can also use to help you with your online learning. Yan. Uh, Ms. Uh, Jovelin Pa Sinos learned a lot from the webinar. Thank you po. Uh, yes. Uh, so please do, uh, you're already watching uh, Vival YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And um, please ano po, support our teachers. Let's pray for our frontliners. And let's pray for everyone at this point. Let's pray for a healthy, happy, and uh, uh country and all the members of it. And let's pray for the health of our, again, pray for our health uh, frontliners natin, mga doctors, and let's pray that this pandemic will be over soon so that we can uh, go back or whatever, be able to adjust to this new normal if this is it, or to be able to go back to what should have been our old normal. But at the end of the day, ano tayo? Let, let's, let's try to yan. learn as one and let's see as one. Maraming salamat po. Again, 
you uh, subscribe po tayo sa ating uh, Vibal YouTube channel and then let's also follow our uh, Vibal uh, FBTH. Maraming maraming salamat po.